the sun up there is it's so hot and the weird thing is it's um, a bright red color because there's smoke everywhere normally uh, what you see out there it is a bit overexposed in the in the camera but um, it's really really smoky so there's a fire over the ridge in the distance down that way <laughs> that's a brown sky I'm just trying to avoid this monster in the backyard there's not much we can do about it it's what we call a pile of rubbish now I'm going to be doing a painting of I think something totally left field something you would never ever imagine I would do but I mean you probably do know because you've probably seen the thumbnail and I've been going oh, I've been going through my um, photographs and printing off ones that I think will make lovely paintings um, scenes from Paris I won't go through them all now but what I did find was a lovely photograph of a very old um, boat Great, isn't that beautiful? So, oh, this is very watercolory, and I found this beautiful painting, Willem van der Velde. In it's in the Amsterdam Gallery. Also, there's some plastic ones that are sitting on in the still ground, but very, oh, very reddish, and it reminds me of the uh, red colours that are outside at the moment. But that said, I shall. I'm going to play. And uh, if it works, you'll see it. And if it doesn't work, you won't see it. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll make a collection of failures that I'll um, put up on my Patreon page or something like that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want to see failures. There's something about this particular boat that um, it's very attractive. Three masted, uh, whatever. Let's call it a sloop, just to I can pretend I know what I'm talking about. Something else to look at when, you, when you're comparing this. Uh, I have a feeling this particular boat is, that's we're looking at the back of the boat, which is the stern of the boat, and the bow is up ahead. So, um, and he's got the longest pole closest to us. So we've got variations. We've also got a very small little... Um, and he's got it vertical. In fact, I might turn it vertical. Might be that that, um, that uh, close to copying, but I'm going because I'm going to reverse it the other way. Uh, I'm hoping it will work. But that said, it's not the actual boat itself in this in the scheme of things is not much bigger than my actual photograph. So I'll put that very close to the side and I'll be able to get proportions at least, um, given that I'm going to be trying to tip it a little bit. I might just literally tip it like that and just see if that helps. So uh, this is the, the, um, the bow of this boat is very attractive and very pretty, it's all painted up. So I'm just not going to put all the details in. And I'm going to flex the boat a little bit. I'm going to exaggerate the back there. So, might even make this bigger by proportion. Now, the main mast, the foremast. To be honest, I think the back one is probably just as much as high as that main one, but still, proportionally. Let's go like that. Let's go a little bit in the middle on this one, a little bit there. It's got some diagonal types of things happening. Now let's just put the flags going way up that way. Actually, that flag's too big, now that I've just realized. Oops, I better go get some uh, a rubber. I'm definitely going to need a rubber. Okay. Now, 
Having just finished that part of the boat, near enough to, I'm now going to be borrowing from let's get rid of that tissue. I'm just going to be borrowing from the uh, Willem, Willem van der Velde painting. Now what I've done is some direction lines. I'll put the, the waves coming over my boat that way. I might put the horizon up a bit higher. In this painting there's another little one that's caught there in the just to add dramatic action and it's in, a, in one of the uh, pockets of, of uh, the water but I won't um, in the valley I won't put that in. Dark, dark here, L light across here but also cumulus clouds forming there. Cumulus clouds underneath this dark getting to very very dark at the top there. Then the blue sky, serious clouds in the distance. Crazy. This is just crazy weather, so it's going to be fun to see if I can do it. I'll just see what how big bigger brush I can get. This other this wonderful old Hello Vao V A Y O made in Italy. It's a size 14, but it's got a special fat top. It's very old. But believe it or not, it's got a price of $107 on it. So I don't know what I was doing way back then, paying that sort of money. But it's a funny sort of brush because it doesn't really come to a point that much. It has a point, but it's um, it's not that um, it's not that pointy, if you know what I mean, compared to the other ones I've got. Now, first thing I'm going to do is wet all over this. Oh no, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> Just realised I'm not using it. The hairs are falling out. One of the things with these mop brushes, they do lose hairs and that one, being old, I remember now why I don't use it at all because the hairs are too loose, it's, it's got too old. So I'm putting water all over this to start with, I don't know if you can see it reflected in the camera, but that's all wet, I'll see if I can pick that up and show you how wet it is. And we're very hot today, so I need to really wet it because it'll evaporate very quickly. I'm not quite sure if you can see that reflection, but I'll just move it around a bit. Right, oh, here we go. I've got a dirty palette, so I've got to <laughs> quickly clean these up. I don't want the green, I don't want that colour. Okay, let's get going now. I'm going to do a beautiful, pretty blue sky in the middle. And then I'm going to come down to the pinks, the reds and the magentas. Hopefully you can see me mixing that. Especially over this area. Go a bit more yellow. When I say yellow, I mean warmer. Take that right down. Use that same underneath the top here. Now I'm going into purples up the top. I'll start with Moon Glow and run it into that pink area. Then I'll get some ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Purple, good old covers all purple that overpowers everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Go away. I'll just put that warm brown up there. I rather like that. It's very spooky. This sort of putting in very dark skies, you can have fun and make mistakes and do random things. You can't do the same thing twice, but that's it. Down here, it's quite warm. It's even though it's brownish, I'll put some ultramarine. I mean, no, I'll put some carbazole violet and burnt umber. I think it might be a good thing. So this is all wet in wet because the 
it's so wet I'm just able to put it on and blend it in. I'll just leave a little bit of pale water happening behind. In fact, dry my brush, clean the brush, just take that up a little bit. I'll go back to the blue and streak that through a little bit stronger. You can see now it's beginning to lose its strength. So I'm just going to put a little bit of purple on the brush, which I like. Streak that through right to the ends. This is one of those occasions where the, the edges might be useful to be properly painted in. See that. Just go over and make sure I'm not leaving any white parts. Keep it all moving. Come down to this area in the back here that has got very um, dark areas. darken the foreground as dark as I can get which is the old ult French ultramarine blue and burnt umber together to try and stick to the blue more than the umber I've got it quite thick on my brush so I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to come back with a bit of scraping and just see how I can scrape out a little bit of action right to the edge. Now I'm going to use a little palette knife here to see how I go with the waves. I'll start with the waves. Oops. over in the distance. Now, clouds. Just toying with the idea of scraping out a few clouds. I haven't done this on clouds before, so I'm not quite sure if that will work. Hmm. Not real happy with that. So I think I'd rather, if I was doing clouds, I'd rather, picking out clouds, I'd rather use the brush. So I'll just sweep it through like that. I just want to make some different layers of, of uh, tone. So some are lighter, some are darker. This rough paper is very grainy. I don't mind. I'm going really slowly to pick up that to pick up the colour. Right. I might just pick a little bit up in the t in the top under the top there. See how that goes. Almost got they've got a it's got a very light edge on some of those. So that'd be fun to do if I could. We'll see how that goes.
So basically the idea here is to try and put as many interesting textures and shapes and Subtleties, I guess you'd call it. By going back over it, you're doing, you're, you're putting shapes and variations in there that you normally wouldn't get, or you wouldn't think of getting. They're just by chance. Another light strike going up there. I might come over that um, background with a bit of um, um, gouache, but I might do it now instead of later. I'll mix, I'll wet my gouache in the pan so that it's not too, this won't be really strong gouache. This is cheating in a way. I'm not real happy with the granulation of that, but on the other hand, this can be fun. Mm. Okay, I'm enjoying that. That looking good. I'll try and keep it away from the boat. Now with the waves, the same the same thing happening. I haven't put the boat in yet because I just want to get this background thing underway. I'm drying off, and then I'll, I'll in fact I'll use a dryer now, and I'll have a go at. Um, I'll get that really dry, then I'll be drawing in the boat, basically. That's as simple as this, this is. Now, the next stage is this particular image. And I'm going to put the, put the um, block on its corner. And we shall get some fine brushes. So I'll start with a medium mop and very dark. This is where I might look more at what they did, or what William, William did. A very dark, um, neutral, I guess. It's hard to tell from the photograph because it would have been in the gallery when I took it. But that's it, I'll just mix up a, a nice neutral grey, the ultramarine blue and burnt, burnt umber. And I'll, I'll just draw the boat in. I'm going to do it all over first. I'm not going to leave any detail. It's going to do its overall shape. It's going to leave a, a couple of wash marks for the no, waves. Then long straight. As you can see, I'm doing it in sections. I can't get my hand to go all the way down reliably. If I try and do it all the way down, I'll get thicker at the base, and I don't want to do that, so I'm just doing it in sections. And because there's, um, what do you call them, lookouts and crow's nests and things like that, it's, it doesn't matter. If you have breaks, I mean, in the stroke. So, that's the main structure, a little bit out the back there. There's some funny little pole things happening there. Don't want to put too much emphasis on those in case they're not supposed to be there. There's a, a flag at the, the front now. I just put those flags in to indicate how windy it is. This one here is obviously a big one. Now, pause, have a think. While it's still wet, do I need to lift something out? And I might just lift out the front corner of the boat that's facing me, just to give it some dimension. There. Even though this, this particular one is rounded. I should go round, actually. I was tempted to make it um, a sharp bow, but that would not be fair. Not what I'm painting. I could down the side here some stroke, some str 
um, yellow stripes but I'm not putting those details in just going to lighten it a little bit okay not real happy with the shapes of when I look at the original one with the wave shapes he's got two two a large one and a smaller one I've got weird combination there so I'll just see what I do with fixing that up Bring that one down. I've got brown on my on my um, brush now, so I'm just going to put that across the front there. Start adding interest by leading in a couple of different colours. I would love to put some of that uh, turquoise green. I'll go for this teal teal blue if I can make it strong enough. I'm having trouble. In fact, I might go for manganese here. It's much stronger. Not quite the right colour, but just going to run that through into the watercolour that's already there and just kind of colour on colour in the darks. The other thing I need to decide is is there any transparency in this water at all so do you see any part of the boat underneath and this painting does not show that it's way too foamy so what I might do is just pull down the water I'll put some I'll put some water going like up to a certain point like that. And then I'll be putting white turbulent foam at the top. So I'm just adding some pretty ultramarine blue there. I'll come back over that later. While I've got done my brush, I'll add it down here. blue is too, probably too pretty a blue so I'll just knock it back a bit now with fresh water okay okay let's have a look at that how are we going whoopee doo I can see a very very um, large the big mast I don't think I've got that in it's underneath the um, middle middle pole I think hmm, it's a bit hard to tell anyway they've got this really long wide one I haven't put that in so that's good fun I'll, put that in. I'll change to a different brush and see if I, c I have any better luck with accuracy so it kind of goes from past one to the other oops and then goes off to thin to paint that in. So I'm just using a, a burnt umber and the um, French ultramarine. I'm making that a little bit darker in various spots. Now I've got some fun and games to do. There's lots of wires and cords and things, sheets I think they're called. I'm just going to look at this guy and just see to what extent he has put that in and they're all there I must admit but then this is an oil painting oil paintings do add everything whereas watercolors don't we just we just have a lot of fun but I can just see if you half close your eyes you can see the netting where they climb the, the, lad, the ladder type netting and that's very strong so I'll put that in Just freehanding it here with the. There's the. Look out, crow's nest thing. Okay, dry brushing. Using the same um, brown and blue combination. I'll just put those in like that. Just fill in that area. Then with a wet brush and slightly thicker. That one's a bit too thin. Bring those areas down into the boat loosely. Yeah. 
few others that need to be done and that we're, that will be um, very, have to be very careful not to be overdoing these. In the, in, the, in the complexity of the storm, the last thing you need to do is be worrying about tiny little lines here and there. I might just put, I don't know that that's a French, it's not French flag, it's probably a Dutch flag now that I think about it, because we photographed this in Holland, uh, in Amsterdam. Definitely put a, a bit of red there and red up there. I think it looks like it's red, white and blue. Blacken that off. Oops. Yeah. Just going to run a little bit of detail around the top edge of this boat too. It's got a handrail, which is very kind for the sailors. Blending in. Got a grid pattern across the front, which now that it's lightning, I can put that in. Got some little tags down the side that look like they're structural, and they can go in. So it's kind of a matter of just deciding as you go which bits um, are worth keeping and which bits to discard. I can actually see the, the way this boat is angled, I'm hoping that you can sort of see under it. So I'll darken that very much down under there. Now, fiddling around is going to be your enemy here. You just don't want to fiddle. Um, and of course, that's it, I'll immediately start fiddling. There we go. I just want to really strengthen those centre poles. Because now they're, as usual, they're, dying, they're drying out and fading, and I don't want them to fade. I want them to hang in there. Side poles, the, the crossbars I'm not too worried about, but these masts, to be, let's be honest, they're masts. Okay. A little bit of white on the brush to finish this off. It's, it's just a fun, a fun little picture. It's nothing... Um, great importance that you would um, submit into competition or anything. It's just a bit of an exercise for yourself. Um, that red is still very wet. In fact, um, if I can find a tissue, I'll dry it off a little bit with my with a tissue because I just I don't want it to run into the white I'm about to put on. But also I don't want it to be that powerful that it's a really strong red. I want the red to be sort of blowing away in the wind in the storm. Just a quick stroke in, a quick stroke there. That's all we need. Now I want to have a bit of fun down here with these waves. So back to my reference. Um, that's every chance that I'm going to need very thick gouache on these waves. Notice how just behind the boat on each side they're very white, just there to really punch the boat out. So I'm going to steal that and try and put some whiteness in behind. Of course, if you do these sort of paintings twice, the second time round you'll know where to leave white and that's what makes a good watercolour painting but because of the way I, I do things I just jump in and do them I make up my mind as I go I often decide later where the white's going to be I don't have it as a forethought and that's the skill it's the true okay stop talking have a think it's not working as well as I would have liked I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to put the white up here into the boat. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a sweep for mine, it's a sweep up and then a few bubbles on this side. And what I might do is just put my finger, actually I'll just wipe it down with the brush. 
He's got, he's quite, I like his style, I like the way he does bubbles coming down the wave. And then I'll do another one here. I'm aware that I've still got a bit of wetness in the bottom of the boat here, so I don't want to go too, too close to that damp area. Hmm. Okay. As I look at it now, I can still see a big difference. I can see a big difference in how dark he's got these areas and how light I have them. So I'm tempted to come back in with a bit more dark, especially the water here as opposed to the sky. I might leave the sky because that's fairly successful, but I might come back in with a very, very dark wash and see if I can really dramatise that water. If necessary, I could balance it up by matching it at the top. So let me just move that there. I'll put the reference picture there. I'll mix up a nice deep colour of the French ultramarine in the burnt umber. And more ultramarine. Okay. So one of the things here is just to keep it uh, kind of in the foreground. I'm going to sort of create its own story. Give it its own waves. Not just pick up on waves that I've already put in. match it up the top. I know I said I wasn't going to touch the sky but I'm not going to touch the cloudy areas. I just want to deepen darken the top and I'll put some purple on my brush. I've got that almost black. And I'll try and make some make these new new strokes are having their own life. They're not following previous strokes. So I'm creating some new shapes with them. And then I'm putting some water on to blend them. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Oops. A little bit of fun <laughs> on a hot Aussie afternoon. If you like this video, can you uh, hit the subscribe button and, uh, and maybe the like in that way. Um, hmm. There's a couple of things I, I must say about this picture. Um, I'm not happy with the fact that I've, got, I've left pencil marks in there. If I was to do this again, I don't know that I would, I would put any pencil marks for the sky or the sea. I'd leave that totally blank. I would just draw in the boat and the waves. So it's something to think about when, if you're going to do this one. Um, the original photographs that I've used will be available on my website, so you're welcome to download those and uh, have a go yourself. <laughs> That'd be good fun. And uh, if you um, uh, hang around, I will do a second uh, painting now showing the same boat, but with uh, in the still, in the calm. I really love that. And at the moment, at the moment, my light outside is so yellow. I, I was just taken to the way this one has a yellow light as well. Okay. Light coming from the left. Beautiful cloud formation here. I'm going to copy that cloud formation. And I'm going to um, maybe have the horizon at the same level which is very similar to my ship. It's similar in size. So let's just see how we go transferring this boat into that scenario. 
Now I've just learnt my lesson not to put in any cloud drawing lines. So I'll just be doing the a good pencil. That's my pencils. So my trouble is I get up and walk away and I take things with me as I go. Anyway. So I've got the line at the back which is the horizon. This boat is, it's actually, I think it's sitting out of the ground because there's probably no cargo in there, it's sitting high. Um, I have to sort of allow for it to be slumped down in the ground. And I'm just going to do a very quick sketch of it and see how much, how much of a feel of accuracy I can get for it. Portion wise, Going right up there for that one. There's those two are closer together, and that one's a bigger gap. Little details like that make a difference because it's more realistic. If you go and put them evenly together, it'll start to look a little bit twee and naive, which you don't really want. Of course, painting this in real life would be so different if you were plain airing underneath it. Wow, you'd get a different view. I think there's a mask there that they've taken down. Maybe that's the way they do take them down. Maybe they drop them. Okay, I'm going to have to shorten that top. I don't think I've got enough room. And I'm darkening this up in the pencil lines. Now I'm going to be doing the sky. Virtually the the building, the um, the boat itself is so dark that I'm not. I'm going to totally ignore it, and I'm just going to do the sky and the water, and I'm going to do it in this style, if I can. And I've been looking at it thinking, one of th I'm going to wet it first all over, so I'm just going to spray, not spray, but really wet it. And now that I think about it, I've probably got dirty water from the last painting, so I'll just put that away. Oh, get some fresh water out, which is this slot. I'm going to wet the whole drawing. All the way down. Now, I'll put that beside. I've got a couple of choices. I'll start with the blues, which is actually, now that I look at it, it's quite a French ultramarine blue up there. Once again, it's a photograph of a painting, so who's to know what it is? But I'll just start with that up the top. I'll just let it flow down into some areas put it over here. One thing that will happen with this um, colour is it will fade. I'll go right over the boat and I'll come down into the water in the same, same way. I'll do that again. A bit stronger up the top. I want to just concentrate on getting those edges clean. If you don't paint right to the edge, sometimes it's nice to leave a bit of white deliberately with brush marks in it. Other times it's annoying, especially if you have, you've sold the painting and they, they want to frame it, then they can't um, get, the, get rid of those little white patches at the edges. Little white um, leftover part and parts. So, just grab a couple of tissues here out of this box. 
can just use that as a cleaner for my brush. Just want to stop stop some of this water coming down. I mean, stop some of the paint coming down in various places by putting in curved strokes of clear water. While it's wet now, I'll go into what I think is a, is a pale orange, really. I'll put it here. Very slowly. I don't want to disturb the paint that's underneath, and I don't want to disturb the actual um, surface of the paper. I'm a bit worried about peeling, the paper peeling up. strong in that spot. Right, so I'm just going to do the reflection underneath. It can be a little bit darker in the water. Sometimes it's hard to know whether to do lighter or darker but the rule of thumb is to go a bit darker in the water than what you're seeing up in the sky. Now that one there is, I think I'll make that a little bit of gold as well bit different to that but I might darken it later. It's white, it's very, it's gone a little bit uh, dry there so I'm having a bit of trouble with that edge. So while it's, no, at the moment now it's got to a point, see that, I'm having trouble there. At this halfway point, it's half wet, half dry, it's almost, it's, you can't do anything with it now. You can't, if you go putting paint into that, this is what happens. You end up with this edge like that. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is grab the dryer and quickly dry that off to freeze it. Interestingly enough, we have to start, well, for me anyway, we have to wash all the way down again. And that's why it had to be bone dry. So this didn't lift. It's, we have, we're treating it like a brand new piece of white paper. And you'll notice if you start doing this and the bottom layer comes off, you'll go, uh oh, it wasn't dry enough. So it has to be very, very dry. And, and that won't move. The bottom layer won't move once it's completely dry. I mean, it'll move if you scrub it hard. But. So I've got some purple already mixed up here, so I'll use that. I'll come in with, I might try burnt um, sienna instead of burnt umber. Just see how that comes to back. It's looking for, you know, I think a lot of blue. I'll add a couple of different blues there. It's French ultramarine, but it's a, just a different brand. Okay, that's getting a nice deep bluey purple. I'll just do a little bit of can't resist a bit of raw umber, I mean burnt umber. Look how that knocks it down, beautiful. Now I've got a bit more blue. So I'm comp when I, while I'm mixing this, I'm looking at this colour and I'm trying to see a similarity. So I'm ending up with a very bluish, purplish colour. Now I'll wet my brush quite a bit. I'll go into another pan so it's very weak. I'll start at the top with a little bit of interesting cumulus and I'll come down into this area once again ignoring the boat I'll just do some nice big swirly colours now I'll wet my brush go around the edges oops, didn't quite wet it enough Anyway, I'll keep working away. I've got a f I've got water on the brush, which makes it weaker. I'll use cloth to take it off. So what I want to do is catch some of these sp areas that look like it's raining when it's I don't think it is. So I'll just curl my brush around into it. Do 
through some of these. Just playing around. Not really. I've got my eyes half closed. Not really planning anything here. Just gently putting curved lines in. And what I'll be doing down the bottom here is matching it up slightly darker. Okay, now one of these examples of less is more. Mine is more graphic looking. With the oil paint that he would have used, he could spend days and days and days blending those clouds to be very, very um, accurate and smooth. But with watercolour, a few strokes, and you've got a similar feel. Not quite the same, but it's close. But what will happen here is this will lighten again when I dry it, but if that's the case I will then um, probably do a third layer. We'll see. I'll get the dryer out now. Okay. So now I'm going to be painting in the boat. And I might just try and choose some more golden tones like those rather than the uh, dull blue reds that I've got in my photograph. So I'll mix up a I might start with just the plain old burnt umber and draw in as much as I can that will um, give me a start on the boat. Let's have another look at this. He's got these very pale um, strokes for his vertical masts, not at all strong, as opposed to these that are very stark against the sky. Anyway, I'll start. I'll do it my own way. <laughs> Which is short sections of line for me. If I start with the lighter brown I can always come back with the black afterwards and just choose which areas I want to be black, not, not all of them. So basically this particular, um, the, I'm putting this boat in a warm light because of the sun, sunset and whatever, whatever action is happening here. Boats are burning. And I hope I didn't hide that from you. Mm -hmm. To make these interesting, I'll put a bit of dark blue, touch that underneath into the brown while the brown's wet. And underneath them to the shadow, I'll pretend there's a shadow. Up here there's a little bit of, uh, looks like a TV antenna. <laughs> I'm not sure that's supposed to be there, but put a few lumps and bumps on this that aren't a part of this, the action. The flags are hanging very low. I don't have to pretend they're out um, capturing the wind. Sort of curl around a bit. So I'm putting, what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of dark blue to that brown that I put on. Not all over, just, I'm just touching it here and there and leaving the other bit, leaving that brown and that's dark, that's light. So therefore, when I say light, that means the brown part. I'll thicken it up here, because I really want them to look solid in that boat. Also, by thickening up the base, I'm giving it that proportion, that, um, I'll think of the word in a minute, the uh, perspective. Thank you. Nice big oh, that pole that goes up there. Oops, way too big. I'm using the blue, the purpley, and a purpley colour at that. When I do the stroke, so don't do the whole stroke, not from there to there, just halfway and then stop. Now, this has got that little black thing, it's got some lines coming that line comes down 
lines all across this boat. Around these crow's nests they have a, uh, what looks like a railing. Just doing that in rough. Basically this is a drawing at this stage. As I get down here I'll start using the fatter part of the brush and making it into a painting but on the whole at the top there you're just drawing that in as if your brush is a pencil. I've just wet my brush very thin and then I'm just going to grade these areas out where the, oops, where the ropes go into a crisscross. grade that one out too. So that's sort of a half mistake but half not a mistake in a way. I just wanted to get rid of that thicker accidental um, thickened line that I put in there. Okay what I'll do now is go to a bigger brush something like a wedge I think. I just kind of get the feeling this might just work and might not be right but I'll have a go to start with. So burnt Umber, ultramarine, and I'm just going to use the um, flat edge and the thin edge to uh, advantage in some ways. That's, that's bled up. I love that. Um, no, no problem with that. Little people on board there, I'll just put some figures. It's a bit hard to say what they are. So my blue and brown are not mixed really close. I'm keeping the brown there and the blue there half and half on my brush to give a sort of a variation in the in what colours are picked up and used in a ran it becomes random. Put in some of the details, just like little notches. Okay, underneath the boat it's going to go very dark, so I'll go to, back to the dark blue, burnt umber, mixed together as dark as I can. Blend it in down there. More water on the brush. Very horizontal line because it's sitting on very still water. 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 So it's mainly just the two colours I'm using. Back to the brown, stronger brown, a bit more of the blue. There's room there to add that um, teal blue later, so I will do that. I'm going to make the boat look like it's really sitting in the water there. Okay. Now I'll get the bigger mop to do this bottom half doesn't have to be as accurate, it can be a little bit vague. His, his ones, his reflections are pretty, pretty good. But he's done paler in the water, not darker. Interesting. So it can be either. A lot will depend on the sky, I guess. That's one of my thoughts. do is just try and roughly roughly reflect what's up the top. I haven't done anything over at the back there at this stage but there is I've washed I just washed the paint off my brush a fair bit then. There are buildings over there and I'm just going to put them in as if they're 
Mm. It's a cross between being modern and being old world. I just try and keep them very neutral. And I'll wash off my brush. Um, two points here, I can either, I'll suck that up to start with while I'm thinking. I can run the water, and I might do that, I'll run the shape straight up into them, and that way they've just pulled down, like that. And I can come back later and decide where the actual horizon is. I can, def I can add it in. But just while, while we're doing this, What are those three blobs? I just think they're blobs. I don't think I deliberately did those. But while they're there, I'll just try and use them for good. some blue on my brush and this I'm just going to do this for the sake of it it's not it's nothing to do with the photograph I'm just going to run a dark blue edge at the base <coughs> using the dryness of this Sometimes this is drying so fast. Just taking that up. Just trying to get a sort of a feeling of ripple in that water. Water. <laughs> I keep saying water. neutral grey. Might add some bright blue into it. Just, oh, that pretties it up too much. It's no good. Okay, just mixing around to get a neutral grey on the blue side. I'll put it back into that one. It's quite blue. down with those shapes. Bring them across into the water. I'm going to blend them up now. By digging out the edges like that you're sort of inferring that there's there's movement in the water. I'll just suck that up if I can. Might be too late. Take a bit of lightness out of that area. While I've got my big fat brush there, I'm just going to add detail in the background here so that it looks a little bit more interesting. As you've gone past the 30 minutes. Okay. I'm going to lighten that up now. Run a, what I've done there is just run a tiny bit of water through it while the, while the paint was wet. We 
pretty important that this stay level at the back. Level or mysteriously disappear it. When I say it, the, the actual horizon line. Sometimes it can be so reflective you can't tell where the line is. So what's underneath is exactly the same as what's above and there's no dividing section there. Run that in. Okay, getting there. I'm going to add a few bright colours. I'm going to add the red at the top here. Just with a couple of strokes. Um, I'm going to put yellow around it. So I'll just clean the brush, dig into bright yellow. I don't know how opaque this will come out, it might not work. I'll really try and pick up a lot of yellow. I'll start on the side here so that it doesn't matter if it's not too bright. Okay, there we go. It's alright. And of course there's yellow going around the front, around there. Now, with that yellow, I'll wash that particular type of yellow off and I'll dig into a, an orange and I'll dull it down with the orange and that way it'll just be an interesting combination. I won't co completely cover it, I'll just add here and there a little bit of orange just so that it adds interest to the colour combinations. Doing that together. Looks a bit, sometimes you do everything too neatly, it doesn't work. And while I'm at it I'll just put some of those colours underneath Scrape them down. Hmm. I think what else? If I had sails, I could have a bit more fun. Oh yes, the teal blue colour. That'd be nice. It kind of fills in this in it fills this area in, so it becomes more solid. It details down the side there, across the middle tiny bit at the back. Oh, I've got some detail there that I might put in the blue just for the fun of it. People are still standing on deck down there. Looks like they're having a right royal party. Oh, and we've got a lovely mast at the front here. I'm sure sailors would know exactly what the name of that four mast or something. it up. It's got a little flag hanging off it. The blue, the white in the middle, and the red at the top. I'll leave it like that. Now I just want to put a couple of more, emphasize these lines here a degree. Mm, maybe not that brush. I need to find a strong brush that has a very, very, very fine tip. And these Chinese calligraphy ones are just pretty good for that type of thing. So I'm just going to put a hint of horizontal lines in to show that that is netting. If I don't do anything there, it's a bit weird. It looks like it could be just a sheer piece of tulle curtaining fabric. So horizontal lines going in. So that's the netting that they run up. Just trying to see if there's any other little, tiny little dots here and there on the, pole, on the uh, ropes. Who knows what they are? Mm. The less is more, so if you just give a hint of that coming down like that and drop it off, your eye has to fill that in and um, uh, it's, it's more mysterious, it's more fun. And it's more satisfying when the eye finally works it out and goes, oh yeah, that joins with that, that joins with that. 
so I've lost it horizontal. Try and make this make sense. This is looking a little bit wonky. But the only part of the of the image I'm not real happy with. And I think it's because it's quite a difficult uh, shape. I'll just put that coming straight down there. And then in the water I'll do the opposite with but with blue. Just drag it through a little bit out that way. Hint at the reflection there. Might be a bit too much. I'm trying to do what he's done there, which is every now and then he's brought the detail in very close. In the reflection, other times he's faded, like there he's got not much detail at all of those people. Here is nice and tight, whether it's because he's thinking they're much closer to the camera, to his vision. So that said, um, I might just, now that I've let that dry, it's a little bit bright, I think. So I'm going to just add a touch of water to dull it off, or to blend it in a way, I guess you could say. So I'll just wet in a brush, drag it through the other way just let it blend with the neighbor the neighbors the paint beside it so that's my sketch of a sailing ship placed on a more interesting background from taken from a master's work and it's just a hint of that I haven't that hasn't been the overpowering section but it certainly brightens up what could be a fairly dull portrait of a boat. So, so thanks very much for watching me paint uh, this particular uh, image. It's, um, it was fun, it's a boat that we saw a couple of years ago in the harbour of Amsterdam and uh, I took a photo hoping one day I'd paint it and I have today. <laughs> So, and it was fun to um, combine it with the dramatic sky from uh, one of the classics in the Amsterdam gallery there. So, thank you. And uh, if you'd like to uh, subscribe and uh, hit the like button, that'd be fantastic. And I'll catch you next time I upload a video. Now, if you're wondering what this funny color is here, like this. Under this, this is, that is not a fake light. That's the sun shining through the smoke. That is all over New South Wales just about at the moment. Well, all over my area, my Sydney area. And it's blanketing the city and up and down the coast. The fires, when they burn, they just put out so much smoke, but I, I know everyone who's experienced smoke with fires knows that, wildfires or bushfires we call them. And uh, it's very hot. <laughs> it's not so windy at the moment, which is not too bad. But um, yeah, it's a crazy light. I wish I could love it, but mm, it's just one of those things. Anyway, bye-bye.